What are inferential tests? An inferential test is the type of test used to calculate the probability that the results of research were due to chance rather than any effect that the independent variable had. The probability is represented as a number between 0 and 1. Inferential tests are a way of quantifying how significant the differences are between two conditions. The standard level for a test showing significance is 0.05, which means there is a 5% chance, or less, probability that the differences are due to chance factors, or conversely, that there is a 95% or more probability that the differences are due to the independent variable. At this point, researchers can generally accept that the results are significant. To find out that the results of an inferential test is significant means that the research can reject the null hypothesis, that there is no significant difference or correlation, and accepts the alternate hypothesis that there is. However, even with a 5% probability of chance, it's important to remember that we are only dealing with probabilities, and not absolute certainties. This means that in a few rare cases, researchers might accept the alternate hypothesis when actually the null hypothesis is true. This is known as a false positive, or a type 1 error. Conversely, there may be times when researchers reject the alternate hypothesis and accept the null hypothesis, when in fact, the alternate hypothesis was true. This is called a false negative, or a type 2 error. There are a few different types of inferential tests, each of which are used for different types of data. But first, it's useful to know the names for types of data and what they mean. Nominal data involves data being in categories or frequencies. For example, the frequency of how many people said yes in an answer to a question. The number is just a label or name for a category, not having any genuine mathematical properties. With nominal data, you cannot use measures of central tendency such as the median, mean, and mode. However, outcomes are able to be coded. For example, 1 could be made a purchase, 2 could be did not make a purchase, and so on. Ordinal data involves numbers that can be put in order, but do not have any mathematical properties like rating scales. It's useful to think of it as a list of things that are ranked from top to bottom. An example of this would be ranking your five favourite TV shows in order, one being the most favourite. In psychology, most of the scores obtained from self-report questionnaires and rating scales are classed as ordinal. For ordinal data, you can use measures of central tendency in order to summarise and display the data. The three main types of central tendency include the mean, which is also known as the average, in order to calculate it, add up all the scores and divide by the number of scores, the median, which is the middle value in a list of values, in order to calculate it, put all the scores in order from largest to smallest and find the value in the middle, and finally, the mode, which is the value that has the most scores when all the values are grouped together. With ordinal data, you can also use measures of dispersion, which gives you an idea of how spread out your data is. There are a number of measures of dispersion, for example, standard deviation and interquartile range, but the most important measure to know is the range, which is simply the difference between the top and bottom value. The third type of data is interval data, which involves using a scale that has equal intervals between the units. For example, minutes or seconds. The main difference between interval and ordinal data is that while with ordinal data we could say a rating of 6 was more than a rating of 5, we can't be sure the difference between 5 and 6 are the same as between 7 and 8. However, with interval data, the points are evenly spaced out and equal. The fourth kind of data is ratio-level data, which is often grouped together with interval data. The main difference is that ratio-level data is the highest, most precise level of measurement. Unlike with interval-level data, with ratio data, zero really does mean zero. So, what are the names of the inferential tests, and what data are they used for? There are five types of inferential tests, which are called the chi-square test, the binomial sign test, the Mann-Whitney-U test, the Wilcoxon signed ranks test, and Spearman's row, also sometimes known as Spearman's rank correlation coefficient. The chi-squared test is used for nominal data in a study that has used an independent measures design. The binomial sign test is used for nominal data in a study that has used a repeated measures design. There is no test for nominal data for a study that has used a correlation design, 
because nominal data doesn't give any genuine mathematical properties. The Mann-Whitney U-test is used for ordinal data in a study that has used an independent measures design. The Wilcoxon signed ranks test is used for ordinal data in a study that has used a repeated measures design. And Spearman's row is used for ordinal data in a study that has used a correlation design. It's also useful to note that inferential tests that are used for ordinal data can also be used for interval and ratio data. It can be a little tricky to remember which inferential test is used for the different types of data and designs, so I like to remember them using some acronyms. Naomi is cool can be used to remember that nominal data plus independent measures equals chi-squared. Naomi rides a blue scooter can be used to remember that nominal data plus repeated measures equals binomial sign test. Olivia is mad can be used to remember that ordinal data plus independent measures equals Mann-Whitney U-test. Olivia runs wild can be used to remember that ordinal data plus repeated measures equals Wilcoxon's signed ranks test. Olivia can swim can be used to remember that ordinal data plus correlation equals Spearman's row. I hope this video has proven helpful for you. If you want more psychology videos like this, remember to leave a like and subscribe so you don't miss out. Thank you for watching.